behaving in a way that's attractive is natural to you, congruent, and it's just who you are. So you don't have to fight any battles with yourself about what to do. Instead, you just approach dating through such a great mindset that you naturally take the right actions. Ignore him and he'll be more into you. Let him chase you. There's quite a bit of dark dating advice out there, isn't there, which suggests if you can play games with guys, then you can make them more attracted to you. If you find yourself constantly losing that attraction with men or selecting the wrong guys, and you're considering going down this slightly dark path, I instead want to teach you ways that you can effortlessly and naturally create that attraction without doing any weird mind games. I'm dating coach Hayley Quinn, and for over 10 years, I've helped both men and women to learn to love dating and meet one another. So during this quick video, I'm gonna give you five ways that you can naturally make yourself more attractive and also lead a dating life that's actually more fulfilling for you because let's also remember, this isn't all just about attracting a guy. This is mostly about you feeling happy and motivated and excited in your dating life. But before we get to that, let's unpick a little bit around this whole get him to chase tactic thing. So you may be curious if any of that kind of getting a guy to chase stuff actually works. And I'm gonna be honest, in some ways it does, and in other ways it really doesn't. Let me explain the difference to you. There's a real difference in all areas of our lives, not just with dating, between tactics and strategies. A tactic is a short-term play or something you can do to try and manipulate a desired result. A strategy is, in my opinion, an approach that you can take towards an end destination. And sometimes these things don't line up. So let me give you a simple example. Let's think if you were doing the two days to get back to him every time. So you're kind of doing a bit of a game playing tactic there. For some men, not all, maybe some that don't have that strong self-esteem, maybe those who are motivated to win, they may at that instance keep chasing you. However, this game playing tactic is gonna start to fall flat later down the line. What happens when ultimately the chase ends? And I think if you want a happy, healthy and mature relationship, the chase has to end at some point. You don't really wanna live in a constant state of, of volatility or high intensity. Instead, you wanna feel like you've achieved stability in your relationship. Even if to an extent some games work, long run, there's usually a problem. So because of this, you really want to instead develop a lifestyle and a process for your dating where behaving in a way that's attractive is natural to you, congruent, and it's just who you are. So you don't have to fight any battles with yourself about what to do. Instead, you just approach dating through such a great mindset that you naturally take the right actions. So your first action step coming naturally more attractive is to cultivate higher standards. I love teaching people about standards because I think it makes such a radical difference to your dating life. So let's take a look at how having higher standards could actually lead you to lose interest in the guy quite naturally and therefore perhaps lose interest in being so responsive to him. So let's say you have a, you're looking for a really long-term committed relationship. Because of that, you may want to consider holding a high standard around things like communication. So for instance, if he's being very inconsistent and he's messaging you 10 times a day one day, then you don't hear from him for three weeks, you may just take that information and look at your own standards and expectations about what you want in a partner and go, this is not lining up. And because of that, you quite organically lose interest in him. So what I'm suggesting is it's about your interest in him being much more closely related to how he treats you and how much he invests in the relationship. This is linked to my second action point that you wanna to take to naturally attract men more. So having high standards is one of them. The second way to be naturally more attractive is actually to be slow to judge and reserve judgment, positive or negative, for quite a long time. Often what can happen is when we have a not so great dating experience, or we feel like someone isn't really respecting us, it's because pretty much from the first meeting, we decide somehow that they're someone we really wanna be with. They tick all the boxes, maybe, you know, he's smart, handsome, 
uh, got the career you want, got great banter on your date, he took you on a really cool date, and suddenly all those boxes are ticked and you can't help yourself as you're walking away from that date, you're starting to smile and build up a picture of what it would be like spending more time together or what it'd be like if he was your boyfriend. Now, a great first date is a great first date and those are always good things. However, I think it's really good rather than moving forwards too quickly and forming an, an impression of someone too quickly, if you can take things slower and allow yourself more time to get to know him, it means that the picture you're forming in your mind about who he is, is gonna be closer to how he's actually showing up for you in everyday life. So if you can slow the process of dating down and instead of meeting a guy one day and then suddenly he's top priority the next, allow him to organically build up that bond to you, much like a really good friend or someone you want to work on a business project with. You know, people in our lives shouldn't really go from naught to 60. Instead, it's about gradually spending more time with the person or giving them more importance in your mind as you get to know them more. Now I've got three more action steps coming up for you, but if you're enjoying what you've heard so far, please head to hayleyquinn.com forward slash real love. And I've got more advice videos out there for any of you ladies that are watching. The third way you can naturally be more attractive is to actually be genuinely busy. <laughs> So when we're fake busy and we're deliberately ignoring people, I think it doesn't feel very good and it doesn't feel very authentic. Instead, it's about cultivating a life that we're excited about enough in ourselves that as I said, some person you went on a date with last week, they just don't register as that important to you yet. And this is where you have to start really valuing your sanctuary or your life or your home space more than a sexy fun date. When you don't perhaps love your living space or you don't have hobbies that really engage you or you don't have the quality of friendships that you like it can feel like there's a need to plug that gap with the excitement of having a bit of romance in your life and instead of chasing the romance i actually think it's so much better and it will enable you actually to make far better decisions about who to link up with romantically if you can do everything you can to shore up other areas of your life now of course all of us, all of our lives are a work in progress and nothing is ever gonna be perfect. But if you really dislike your living space, is there a way that you can redecorate it, move some stuff around, change housemates, so you can just feel a bit more comfy at home? Is there a way that you can reach out and make, form new friendships? Is there a small start you can make on a business project or something else you're really passionate about? Anything that adds to your self-esteem and your sense of independence and makes hanging out with you look way more appetizing than a bad day is actually a really good thing for you to invest your time and energy in. Now, our fourth action point, which is coming back to this idea of time, another way that we can be more attractive in how we communicate is we can be more mindful. Now, we've all been there, myself included, when you are waiting on a message from someone and you're staring at the phone and you're refreshing and you're noticing when the bubbles are there or someone's typing and that is just like a, a bad vortex it's like a trap for your emotional energy levels instead it's so much better i think to focus on what you're doing in the moment i think mobile phones can sometimes i don't know sometimes my mobile phone i think it makes me feel anxious it doesn't make me feel particularly good about my life. And sometimes in order to feel better, literally all I need to do is put my phone on airplane mode for 24 hours and like life is good. If you find like in, you're in the habit of overthinking things, overanalyzing, checking up on him a lot, like hanging on the telephone. Well, we don't do that now in modern times, but you get what I mean. You're waiting for his message. I would practice being more mindful instead. So that could mean whatever you're doing, whether it's cooking your dinner, hanging out with a friend. Can't we just go back to the point where mobile phones are in our bags or they're face down on the table and actually be present with whoever or whatever you're investing your time and energy in within that moment. Now, I think this is really cool because it means you aren't gonna be immediately responding to his messages, but not because you're playing games, but because you're actually present and focused on what's going on in your life right now. The final tip I have for you today on how to be super attractive really naturally 
is to get into the idea of letting it go. Now, letting it go is a hard thing. Um, I've got some other videos on that on my YouTube channel that you may wanna check out, which go into this in a lot more detail. But for now, when we get really stuck on someone and we start to kind of connive ideas to show them how great we are or get back at them or whatever it might be, all we're really doing is digging ourselves into a big emotional hole where we're really overcommitted emotionally. Because if you spend all of your time strategizing about how to get someone, not only is it very, it can feel very inauthentic and it can feel very unkind and just not cool, you also end up putting so much emotional investment on this one person, they become bigger in your minds than they actually are. If you can practice getting to the point where you can look at a situation with a guy and recognize that he is not able to give you the kind of relationship that you want, your values aren't aligned, at that point, it's just a case of saying to yourself, I realize that we're misaligned in terms of what we want, he's not done anything wrong, I've not done anything wrong, but it's just not a match, so I'm gonna let it go. One of the phrases I like is for you to say, it's just not for me right now, or it's just not for me right now, I'm letting that go. So try and work yourself to the place where instead of going to the game playing or the tactics, instead try and think actually what is the strategy for what's healthy for you long run, what's gonna make you feel positive about dating, what's gonna give you energy for your dating life, what's gonna make you think positively about other people, and that's ultimately the right path that's gonna move you towards your goals. Um, if you've liked this video, and also if you want really detailed advice on the process of how to let it go, I'd really recommend you hop over to my channel, give me a subscribe if you can, and of course, if you found the information in this video helpful, please like, share it with a friend who you think might need to hear this, and thanks again for watching my channel.